tonight, the first part uh, is uh, is Amy Elizabeth has just joined us. She's driving back from being uh, in the air uh, for two or three days. And uh, but we're going to be talking about uh, a kingdom mindset, birthing a kingdom mindset tonight. Uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. As Sherry said, this is a two-part series about birthing the kingdom. And birthing the kingdom is a supernatural birthing. And uh, we need to recognize that. We're not, we're not talking about something that's natural. We're talking about a supernatural birthing process. And uh, we're, we're going to be talking about birthing the kingdom mindset today. And then uh, the next time we meet, we'll be talking about birthing kingdom strategies uh, to impact the earth. And, and so uh, there's a lot to cover and uh, we decided to break it into two, two parts, but they're very important, uh, critical. And uh, tonight we'll be talking about the mindset. And what I want you to, uh, as an introduction, I want you to realize that when you are born again and Christ comes in, he brings his kingdom with you. He brings the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, and, and he brings things like your purpose and your destiny and visions and dreams and uh, ministry and all of that's there in the kingdom. And uh, it's important for us to know those things. And if we don't birth the kingdom, then we can have abortion, ab ab aborted ministries or aborted visions mm -hmm. or miscarriage. And, and so it's a birthing it's a supernatural birthing and, and the basic scripture is galatians 4 19 we're not going to read it now we'll cover it in more detail in a moment but basically uh, paul was writing to born again christians who had already gone through a birthing process and he said i'm praying again prevailing in birth again for you uh for christ to be birthed in you so he's talking about the fullness of Christ being birthed uh, in people who were already born again. So it's a uh, it's a different kind of birthing. Mm -hmm. And it's birthing the Christ and his rulership and his kingdom uh, in them. And it's through the mindset. It starts there in the mindset, but it doesn't end in the mind. It, it moves out into the strategies to impact uh, the world around you. And so today we'll be focusing on the mindset. And I, I want you to know that uh, there were some churches in the New Testament that did not have a kingdom mindset. Uh, and so we're going to look at those uh, churches. You think, oh, everybody's got a kingdom mindset if they're born into the, into the um, spirit of, by the spirit of God and Christ comes into their heart. Well, mm -hmm. they've got everything. But I, I tell you, he, he's writing to some people that do not have a kingdom mindset. And the two churches are the Corinthians and the Galatians. And uh, they're mm -hmm. a little different. Uh, but what I want you to see, we're going to look at the problems and why they're the way they are and why they're not birthing the kingdom mindset. Uh, but then there's a solution because uh, God always has a solution. Uh, in, in Christ Jesus. And so we're going to see what those solutions are, but I'll give you a hint. It's prayer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I like to just come right down to the nitty gritty right, and, right. and tell you the, the end mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning, because I see the ending from the beginning. And so let's look first at the Corinthians and why was it this particular group of Christians, born again Christians, uh, could not birth the kingdom. A and there's a, a, there had to be two letters written to them. They had so much uh, garbage and junk going on in there, he had to correct. Uh, but they had so much positive things going on in their lives. Uh, but yet we see a lot of instructions for the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And they could, op they were operating in the gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, and so doing uh, great uh, things. But uh, he had to bring some order there. See, what well, that's what the king, kingdom mindset is going to do. It's um, going to bring order, God's order, mm -hmm. into situations. And, mm -hmm. and they were operating in the gifts, but they were not kingdom-minded. Uh, that hadn't been birthed in them yet. 
And, and let's just look at Galatians 3 in the first of verses of Galatians 3 uh, to explain what was going on with the Corinthian, with the believers in Corinth. In uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not yet carnal and behaving like mere men? <laughs> wow. Ooh, that wow. says a lot. This explains mm -hmm. uh, the Corinthians, the believers at Corinth. And uh, they were immature. Uh, mm -hmm. They were not spiritual. They were carnal. Now, let's, what is carnal? Well, carnal is a mindset. And uh, we know Romans 8 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Well, life and peace, that's part of the kingdom. Life and peace, that's the kingdom. Kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. Hell, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. So, so if they're carnally minded, they're not kingdom minded. They, the carnal mind is hostile towards God and cannot obey God. Cannot, listen to this, cannot obey God. And, and so these people are not kingdom minded. They, they are Christians and they love the Lord and they're, they're operating in the gifts but yet they haven't had this birthing process I'm talking about. And I want to just give you uh, an example of it. Uh, we have a dear friend, and she's a dear friend to many of the people here. And the other day uh, she gave a testimony, and then she said um, that I have been taught about the kingdom all of my life as a Christian, and uh, people have tried to explain the kingdom to me, and I've tried to learn about the kingdom uh, but I never understood the kingdom until I asked Jesus uh, what he meant by the kingdom and he explained it to me and now she said, oh, I'm a new girl. I'm a new girl. <laughs> she had this experience I'm talking about. I'm a new girl. I'm a new girl because she had... When it was birth. It was birth. The kingdom was birthed in her. Hallelujah. And, and we all need this kind of experience. Uh, I've had it, and I know the day, I know the time when mm -hmm. I had, when it was birthed in me. And before that, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was born again. I was filled with the Spirit. I, I could operate in the gifts. I, I loved the Lord. I loved the people of the Lord. But that day, uh, it was birthed in me. I'm talking about a supernatural birthing of the kingdom uh, as shown there in Galatians 4.19. Sherry's had the same experience. Mm -hmm. uh, she was born again at night, and she was filled with the Spirit as, as an adult, uh, but and operated in the gifts and loved the Lord. We both loved the Lord, but it came at a different time right. when she had, was birthed. There was this birthing of the kingdom, and, and I, I will talk more about it, but I want to just give you this background uh, and an explanation uh, it's a supernatural birthing when you have the kingdom mindset. Uh, we'll go into more detail, but uh, the point I want to make, we're still looking at just a few verses from the uh, Corinthians. Corinthians, and uh, we see a group of people that are not going to be able to birth the kingdom. And he explains this in the 1 Corinthians 6. I'm going to ask Sherry about reading these verses, but the point I want to make here. These people are not birthing the kingdom. There's a whole long list of them. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Ooh, they can't birth it. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the greedy, Greedy. Uh -oh. um, Ooh, no, don't be greedy. <laughs> nor those habitually drunk, nor verbal abusers, nor uh -oh. swindlers uh -oh. will inherit 
the kingdom of God. They can even go through this long list. None of these people are going to be able to birth a kingdom mindset. They may love the Lord and they may uh, love God's people and they may be right there in, in the church Amen. congregation, but they are not birthing the kingdom. But praise God for Jesus because there's always a solution and uh, we're going to look at the solution and this is in uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 9. Let's see what's going to happen. And it may be related to prayer. Is this this? We will also pray for that you become mature. Oh, Hallelujah. So, so what's the problem in, in uh, the Corinthians? They were immature. Right. They couldn't eat spiritual food. They couldn't, couldn't receive spiritual food. So Paul was feeding them with milk, but now he's praying. Oh, Hallelujah. now I know Paul's prayers are powerful, and I believe your prayers are powerful too. Amen. Amen. You can pray for yourself, and you can pray for other people. You know, having a kingdom mindset is very important. If you want to bring forth your destiny and your purpose and your ministry, you've got to have a, a kingdom, kingdom mindset. mindset. And the, we're going to have to grow up. We can't be immature. can't be carnally minded. We can't be committing these sins that... Uh, uh, that Paul wrote about in 1 Corinthians 6, but we can pray. We can pray for Hallelujah. people to mature. And when they mature, oh, glory to God, then they can receive this spiritual birth that I'm talking about, a kingdom mindset. Now, there's a second church. So so Paul wrote the first of the Corinthians, and he also wrote to the Galatians. And, and he wrote to the Galatians. Now, they had a little different issue than the Corinthians. It's important to, to go through these two groups uh, because we want to see what, what not to do. And, and, but then, of course, we're going to focus on what to do and how to do it. But the kingdom mindset, that's what we're looking at. And the second group that were not kingdom-minded were the Galatians. Now, again, they loved the Lord. They, they uh, served the Lord. Uh, but something happened with this group. They let some false teaching in. They, they were going along fine with the Spirit of God and being led by the Spirit of God, but then they brought in some teachers that uh, mm -hmm. talked about uh, being circumcised mm -hmm. and, and brought in some error. Uh, but that was one of the main things because they put them back under the law. Whoa. Put them back under the law. Hallelujah. We're not under the law, but we're under grace. We have grace. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so he, he's writing to them. So let's ex see that explanation of it there in Galatians 1. Galatians 1, 8. But even if we are an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. Okay, so they're talking about an alien gospel or a mm -hmm, false gospel. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of truth to it, but then they poured in a little bit of things that were wrong. And, and you pour a little bit of leaven, and that leaven goes through oh, the whole thing. And, and it causes the whole thing to be leavened. And if mm -hmm. it's sin, so you bring in a little bit of sin, and it just goes mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and messes things up. But the same thing here with what they were believing. They, they had been under the Spirit and operating in grace, and then they had some false teachers. They said, well, you've got to go back under the works of Moses and under the law of mm -hmm. Moses. And so they were not, they were not kingdom-minded. So there's a lot of things that block being kingdom-minded. And uh, we're going to look at it here, ask Sherry to read these mm -hmm. verses. And these verses are very familiar to you. Uh, from uh, Galatians 5, mm -hmm. it talks about the workings of the flesh. Oh, yeah. But if people are uh, involved in the workings of the flesh, and she'll just list uh, some of these, then they're not developing a kingdom mindset because we're going to go into more detail about how to develop it. But I wanted to show you some warnings, things to stay away from, things that will keep you from having a kingdom mindset. Mm. Okay, so let's read these verses. This five. is Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are sexual immorality, impurity, indecent behavior, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish, admit, ad, uh, 
selfishness, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these of which I have forewarned you, just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of okay, God. People doing those things, they're not birthing the kingdom. The they're not birthing the kingdom mindset or the kingdom strategies. Now, just to give you a little bit of a, an, an idea of what we're looking at here today, let's compare religion and the kingdom. Religion, see, is man's approach to God. It's focused mm -hmm. on God. It's man's approach to God. Mm -hmm. It's systematic approach to God. It's so, from earth it's, to heaven. It's earth to heaven. But the kingdom is God's uh, rulership, his approach to man, a systematic approach to man. That's the kingdom. It's oh, heaven to earth. So it's a big difference. It's a big difference. And so a lot of people get involved in religion and they don't realize that they need this supernatural birthing of the kingdom. And we'll talk more about it, but let's go ahead and, and look at uh, the way out. Because mm -hmm. with Jesus, there's always a way out, even for the Galatians. Let's read what Paul did. Uh, for Galatians, Galatians. 4.19. My little children, of whom I travail in birth, that's hard labor. That's intercession, again, until Christ be formed in you. Okay, for Christ to be formed in you, see, that's the fullness of Christ. That's his rulership. That's his kingdom. It's all there. That's not anything lacking. And so what, he's writing this letter to Christians who are born again, but they have not had this experience of the kingdom mindset being birthed in them, of Christ being birthed in them and the fullness of Christ and his rulership. And that's what we're talking about tonight. We want a different mindset. Now, I'm going to just give you some basic principles here. And we have to have be so fully committed to the rulership of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. through his kingdom that it's going to cause us, it's going to motivate us to present our bodies a living sacrifice and, and renew our mind, all the way through the process of renewing our mind. Now, a lot of people, a lot of believers go through this first step, but there are other steps. So this is a critical step we have to be so committed to Jesus Christ and his rulership on the earth that we're going to be motivated to present our bodies a living sacrifice and renew our mind. Okay, read these verses, Sherry. Okay. Kingdom mindset, kingdom mindset sees things from God's perspective. Oh, excuse me, Romans 12. Okay. okay. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay. so that you may prove what the will of the Lord is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Okay. So here it is, renewing our mind. The way we're doing it, we're committed to his rulership of his kingdom because the kingdom mindset, see, is looking at things from God's perspective. It's not that earthly perspective looking up to God, but it's the heavenly perspective. It's God's perspective looking down and looking from his perspective, from heaven. And so there is not just the one part of renewing our mind, but it's the second part, and that is the kingdom first. Seek first the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. And it's those two things go together. See, there's a lot of people that love God and can present their bodies as a living sacrifice and renew their mind, but they don't renew it to the kingdom of God. Oh, that's really important. See, they have the first component. They love the Lord so much that they present their bodies as a living sacrifice and they renew their mind as a result of that. Mm -hmm. But they do not 
bring in the kingdom and seek the kingdom with all their heart. Okay, so read this verse, Sherry, Matthew 6, 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Okay, so it's not just renewing your mind, but it's renewing your mind to the kingdom. Mm, and, mm. and see, I went for years. I, I went through the process of renewing my mind. And I loved the Lord, and I wanted to serve the Lord, and I knew I had a calling on my life. Reading the Bible and, from Genesis to Revelation. Reading, and, and so, and we were with the people of God, and we loved the people of God, and, and all of that was very important, but there was an element missing, and that was this spiritual birth of the kingdom within me, and I know the day it happened, and that changed things, and so uh, what I want to do is say it's important for you to be around kingdom-minded yes, people. people. See, if you haven't been around kingdom-minded people, well, they they have that earthly perspective on things. They're, they're looking towards God from the earth. You need people who have the kingdom perspective around you mm -hmm. in your circle, mm -hmm. uh, and they have the same kingdom mindset. They have mm -hmm. a kingdom mindset that's the people that are going to help you birth the kingdom. Okay, so let's just look at a very for a very practical way of looking at birthing the kingdom in us. Philippians talks about it and talks about some things that uh, there are three points I, I want to make. We know from Romans that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and mm -hmm. joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's mm -hmm. about the Holy Spirit, it's the realm of the Holy Spirit, and it's going to produce the fruit um, of righteousness, righteousness, peace, and joy. And this is what Philippians is talking about. Uh, so let's, I want to share, just read three verses here in Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. This is verse 4. And again, I say rejoice. Okay, so the, re, the rejoicing, whose responsibility is it? Uh, to rejoice. Well, it's our responsibility. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So we need to be rejoicing. And that's a part of the kingdom. Pe righteousness, peace, and joy. And the other one is about how we think. And that's in uh, Philippians 4, 8. Let's look at this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay, so these are the things that we're going to, if we have a kingdom mindset, we're going to think on these things. What what things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good report. So we think about those things. But verse 9 then, still in Philippians 4, is is. Paul is kingdom minded. You you follow Paul's teaching. Uh, he talks and he preaches about the kingdom. And so he's saying to let's look at him, see what he has taught mm -hmm. and, and, and learn from him and learn what he's saying to us. Watch his actions. So we need people who are around us who talk about the kingdom, who preach about the kingdom, Hallelujah. Uh, and, and who act on the kingdom. Who, who think kingdom. Who think kingdom. Kingdom mindset. And that's what verse 9 is. Read that, Sherry. Those things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Okay. So we look at a person like Paul, and that's exactly what happened in the lives of Sherry and me, mm -hmm. Sherry and me, that we had kingdom-minded people around us. Uh, our, uh, and we still do. Hallelujah. Our spiritual father, uh, uh, Brother Bob Terrell, kingdom-minded. He was, a, was an apostle. He's passed away a few years ago, but he raised up apostles and prophets. And those people are touching the world, changing the world, discipling nations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's what the kingdom-minded people are going to be doing. They're going to be reaching out. It's going to have a broad vision, not just uh, of our local congregation or my family or 
uh, just a small area, but I'm talking about bigger things than that. Uh, we were uh, with a meeting uh, yesterday with uh, uh, Sister Rebecca Wheeler, and uh, she said we're going to take Georgia. Amen. Well, I mean, that's a kingdom-minded person. We're going to mm -hmm. take Georgia. Right. Yeah, sure, we are. We are taking Georgia. Amen. Uh, and it that's the kingdom mindset. But it, it didn't happen um, at first with us. Even though we were filled with the Spirit and being taught of the Word of God and learning the operating the gifts and uh, with revelation knowledge and uh, many, many things. But it took us a, a while being around kingdom-minded people before we had a supernatural birthing of the kingdom mindset within us. Hallelujah. And, and I, can, I can see when it happened. I want to just kind of explain it to you. Uh, we knew uh, that we were called into the ministry and, and we had actually uh, connected with uh, Brother Bob uh, Terrell and, and uh, the apostles and prophets uh, that he was raising up. Uh, and, and let me just say this about him. Uh, he His basic goal was to disciple uh, 12 uh, people for three years, just like Jesus' model. And I heard him say, uh, in about uh, 1999, just shortly before his uh, death, that he had 56 men that were related to him. And maybe he had disciples like me. 200. <laughs> well, I'm going to get to that in okay. a second. Uh, because he had basically uh, the perspective that uh, he, he was discipling 12 men a year. And, and But there were two exceptions, and, and Sherry was, of course, one. Uh, female and then another uh, woman in Maryland. Uh, so, uh, so he changed in that respect. Uh, he did see Sherry as one of his uh, sons uh, and me, and so he discipled us for for three for three years. And but what happened with those, let's say, a couple of hundred people that he discipled over his lifetime, doing twelve for three years, uh, that some of those went on their way, but he had. 56 that continued to relate to him and we'd all come together uh, for a family camp and we'd have conferences and meetings and he would come into our life and he'd sit uh, in our living room and he'd bring prophets with him mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know because we had that kind of interaction at one point in time then I had this rebirth I had a birth of a kingdom mindset and uh, I think about the, the prophets and apostles that he sent here uh, to help us grow. Mm -hmm. and I will say this, that nobody told us uh, how to operate in our ministry. Nobody's ever told us that. But what, what the prophets do, they, they come and they drop, uh, they drop the, <laughs> the, the, plumb line. the plumb line to see whether or not we align up. And uh, we had uh, a, a prophet one time that came and we were uh, involved in the ministry, the ministry that the Lord had had us raise up. And he came and said, oh, this is a, a good little charismatic meeting. Well, that just crushed us because <laughs> that's not what we were trying to do. We're, we're trying to move toward the kingdom. But now they didn't tell us, they didn't tell us how. Uh, to move towards the kingdom, but that was in our heart. But we did have that interaction with people, and they would drop the plumb line on us. If we weren't uh, operating in the kingdom, they let us know. But but let me say that we progressed over time, mm -hmm. and, and through time, uh, those same people that, that said we were not kingdom to begin with, uh, they, they said what we were doing was really a model of kingdom. And that was when we had the mission and when we were uh, ministering in the jails and prisons. And, and uh, they wanted to bring people here to Athens to see what we were doing. Amen. But, but it, it, it wasn't easy to get into the kingdom. Uh, even though I had a birthing of that kingdom mindset, that didn't mean I was uh, the mature in it. It just meant that I was ready to move into mm -hmm. it. And then the very people who said we weren't kingdom, uh, one time as we began to change and move, and, and we were always uh, connected with people and they were encouraging and, and all. And then, I mean, they would change and say, oh, 
what Fred and Sherry are doing is kingdom. They called it pure religion. What, I mean? what we Amen. were doing was pure religion. I want you to know that there's a lot of people that talk about kingdom. They use a vocabulary of kingdom, but they still have a religious mindset, a religious mindset. And so you've got to have this rebirth that I'm talking about, birth of the kingdom uh, mentality uh, operating in your life and, and bring it forth. And, and, and so this is just the first in the in a series of two messages. And we're going to talk more about in the next message about kingdom strategies because we want to know, want you to know how we have progressed um, because we did have a mission. Uh, in which we dealt with uh, homeless uh, people and, and uh, prostitutes and drug addicts, but we also ministered in, in jails and prison. And then there was a time that the Lord spoke to us and said, turn that over to somebody else because we needed to be moving out more internationally. Amen. So what we're doing in these days are, are uh, going into different nations and discipling nations, really, we're raising up young ministers uh, in different ma uh, nations and sending them out into the world. Amen. And so we have a kingdom mindset, but it didn't just come automatically and it didn't come just because we love the Lord. There's a lot of people that love the Lord and they're renewing their mind, but they haven't got the kingdom connection uh, and don't have that uh, priority of bringing forth Christ rule on the earth through his kingdom and they don't experience this uh, rebirth that I'm talking about of a kingdom mindset so you're looking from God's perspective bringing his will from heaven on the earth and you've got to have people around you with that kingdom mindset mm -hmm. and then that will cause you to develop uh, strategies, kingdom mm -hmm. strategies to impact the world. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for being Hallelujah. here today and we'd love to uh, hear from you. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Amen. Well, I, I, I pray that this message has stirred you on, on the inside and, and uh, I know that, uh, I mean, this is called kingdom leadership and so I believe that you uh, are here uh, to to participate and to and to learn and to be part of uh what the lord is doing on the earth right now and i believe that he's bringing his his children uh from from children to to sons into sonship i believe that the whole earth is is crying out and groaning for the manifestations uh manifestation of the sons of god and those are those people that are kingdom minded and they they are bringing God's will from heaven to earth and they're they're participating uh, and being a part of what God is doing and not what man is doing. Now, did you hear what I just said? We are be we are to be participating in what God is doing and not what man is doing. That's no, good. You're really good. Hallelujah. And that, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to, uh, to continue to grow and develop and, and be, uh, used of the Lord. And, and I believe that, that, you know, that you're here tonight, uh, be, because of that, that reason as well. You want to be used of the Lord. And, and so many of you are, uh, just, uh, you're out there and you're doing what, what the Lord wants you to do. You know, a kingdom mindset is also that you're, you're heavenly minded and not earthly minded. That you spend, you know, time thinking about uh, heavenly things, you know, faith. You're thinking about peace. You're thinking about joy. You're thinking about uh, prosperity uh, because it, it gives uh, the Lord great delight for his servant to prosper. And so if, if you, if you think, oh, well, you know, to think about prospering, you know, that's a uh, carnal. No, you know, that the Lord is, he, he owns all the silver and all the gold and all the cattle on a thousand hills. And so he is a very wealthy father. 
and he's my father and he's your father and so if you're if you're thinking richness sorry if you're thinking you know this is what the lord has given me hallelujah uh then praise the name of jesus that's part of uh thinking uh about the kingdom and uh jesus was trying to to get his disciples to think kingdom and uh and that's why he gave them the lord's prayer you know people stand up and quote the lord's prayer like it's some kind of poem uh poem or something uh but let me tell you it's a very powerful prayer and he was saying you know pray this way you know if you want to pray if you want to learn to pray go back over the the lord's prayer and pray it hallelujah it's it's bringing heaven to earth his kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven well let me tell you something there's no sickness in heaven hallelujah we need to think kingdom right now because when we get up there we're going to be praising 24 7 hallelujah we're going to be worshiping 24 7 we we don't need healing up there we don't need a uh, silver and gold up there praise god we don't even need our human bodies I'm not going to go too far, but, you know, this is, this is something that, you know, to be kingdom minded, Jesus wanted his disciples, which include you and me, all of you and brother Fred and I to be kingdom minded, to think on things that God thinks on. Hallelujah. One thing that God thinks on is that, that none should perish. Hallelujah. And I, I believe we talked about this in, in the meeting we went to yesterday, and that is, you know, going to the streets. And of course, we, the, the streets are very familiar to us, Brother Fred and I. And we love the streets, and we love going to the streets, and we love ministering to those people on the street. Hallelujah. And it says that Jesus is close to the outcasts. He is close to those people. And so... That's part of kingdom thinking. I'm just, uh, I'm going to turn it, uh, I'm going to open up the floor in just a moment uh, to hear your comments uh, about this message tonight. So I'll put it on. There you go. So we can see all of your faces. And so just unmute yourself. If you have a comment, if you have something to share, if you have a word for someone, uh, and let's just let the Holy Spirit have his way in what we're doing tonight. Um, I have a, a question, if, if nobody else wants to say anything right now, but um, this Amy. <laughs> Anyways, I, th I think you answered my question. What I was wondering was what is the difference between a godly mindset and a kingdom mindset and so what i'm seeing if i and i may i want to make sure i'm understanding it right is the difference between micro and macro so basically you're thinking about you know god is concerned with our personal growth with you know how things that we deal with on a daily basis and like i was telling you dad the other day you know he's numbered the hairs on our head so he knows he is concerned with that piece of it and then you know so that's one small wheel and then I, I feel like I see the kingdom mindset as the the bigger wheel so a wheel right. within the wheel right, right. and that you know that's where we're we're having a broader mindset about how to impact things outside of our personal yeah. life oh, that's, that's you know good. So that's, that's good. How, where we're where we're looking at the whole picture of the kingdom of God and how us personally can impact a major piece of that. Is that, does yeah. that make sense? Yes, yes that's, okay. that's a beautiful way to look at it. I mean, there's a lot of godly people, uh, devout people, loving the Lord, serving the Lord, mm -hmm. but, but do they have a broad view of what God wants to do in their city and in this nation and disciple mm -hmm. nations. That's what Jesus told us to do, to disciple the nations. Right. Are you a part of that? And we just have to do what God wants us to do, be a part of what he is doing. We want to be a part of what he's doing, where he is, where he's doing it. Amen. 
Amen. Well, thank you, Amy. Oh, Excellent. I had, a, I had a question. Um, when you guys both received the kingdom mindset, were you together or was it two different times? No, it two was two different, times. two different times. And uh, did we, you ask, did you seek it and ask for it or did he just drop it in you or how did that happen? Uh, well, Sherry, I'll let Sherry just tell you first. Well, I, mine was one day I was, I was praying. I, I was praying and I just, I just felt just like when he poured that the love of the love in me uh, as we were working in the mission and and I told the Lord I needed more more of his love then all of a sudden supernaturally I felt something on the inside of me and I, I knew that it was the love of God that I had asked for but I was praying one day and um, I, I don't think I asked for a, a kingdom mindset what I asked for was to to be where he was. Uh, and I wanted to be right there with him. That's what I asked for. And that's when then he began to put that thinking on the inside of me, a broader thinking than my family, uh, the, the ministry that we were doing. But, but what was he thinking? And he put that... Uh, in me and and but that's what i asked for was to 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 be with him and um and so to answer your question uh you can certainly ask for for that kingdom mindset uh to come but then freddie okay so. mine was a little different in that uh we were we had joined with kingdom-minded people and uh, we had committed to them. They had committed to us. They were going to disciple us. And we were in the meetings. Uh, and people had taught me about the kingdom for years. And it's just like the my dear sister that I, I talked about earlier, uh, that she didn't really understand it. Uh, understand it. Uh, but people have taught me for many years about the kingdom. And I read the, all the verses about the kingdom. I studied the kingdom. But I didn't have it alive. It didn't. It wasn't alive in me. Jesus said that you have the kingdom within you, Luke seventeen twenty one. Mm -hmm. But one day when a, a prophet was teaching uh, the kingdom of God, it came alive. It, it was just uh, this birth that a supernatural birth that I'm talking about. It wasn't even that I had sought it. But what mm -hmm. I wanted to teach you tonight. Uh, both to the Corinthians and to the Galatians, the solution is prayer. Mm -hmm. And so you can pray for yourself to receive this thing, right. but also to be around kingdom-minded people and, and be listening about the kingdom. That's what this group is. is. The God, God raised this group up, he did. this Zoom meeting. This is about kingdom leaders. And so these are kingdom, and, and we need to have that mindset we can pray it for ourselves. Sherry and I pray it for all of you uh, that your uh, that the kingdom mindset be birthed in all of you, each one of you. Amen. And so we're praying it. You can pray it. Uh, but it's also remember those two critical keys. Uh, the first one was that you're so committed to Christ and his rulership on the earth that you are passionate about offering your body as a living sacrifice and renew your mind. But the second one is to the kingdom, renew it to the kingdom. There's a lot of people are renewing their mind, but not to the kingdom. And so they're, 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 they keep getting drawn back into religion, into man's approach to God Amen. and not looking at things from God's perspective and that's what the kingdom mindset is. It's looking at things from God's perspective. Does that answer your question, Cindy? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. 